Hello, my name's Andrew Brooks and welcome to my record collection YouTube video. Just going through my record collection uh, which consists of Beatles and Apple records. I've come across a box, I've, obviously I've had a little sneaky peek inside because I'd forgotten what was inside it. Very excited when I found it. Cardboard box. So carry on watching and I will open it and display all of its treasures. Okay, we're continuing on with my record collection of Beatles and Apple records and as I said in the uh, lead up to this I've discovered a box that I'd totally forgotten about very excited to show you I'm going to pick it up and show you it now see if you can figure out what's inside it okay here's the box as you can see it's very heavy full of records it's um, it's a 12 inch box so it contains albums possibly 12 inch singles um, it's come to my local record shop where I used to live um, urgent message see inside blah blah EMI new releases do not deliver until Monday the 22nd of March 1993 so we're going back a few years now um, I've kept them all in this box since then they didn't all come in this but they were part of a set and I did put them all in here once the set was complete just to keep them safe I forgot all about them so okay I'll let you into the box now so we'll open it up and as we can see inside it's James Taylor there's a little clue for you they're all Apple Records from the 90s reissues so some exciting finds in there as well as I'm sure you'll uh, you'll figure out so I'm going to go through them one at a time the first lot uh, there was three phases sorry four phases of um, reissue of Apple Records the, the first one came in 1991 where they reissued four um, albums now some of these albums were, were um, issued with unreleased tracks in the form of a bonus record that came in the sleeve and unlike the album these records were played at 45 even though they're a album size and they're not 12 inch singles they've, they've got quite a few tracks on them but they're played at 45 but I'll come on to them when we uh, when we get to the first one so as you had a sneaky preview inside the box the first one is James Taylor James Taylor I'll move it around so hopefully you won't get too much shine on it because they're and we're in uh, protective sleeves. Exact replica of the um, original issue. Um, the original um, in British ones I believe had black writing. Well they do because I've got one. Um, and then subsequent issues it was in uh, orange. And uh, yeah so it's just a standard release. Exactly the same gatefold sleeve. Nothing unusual about that. Nothing special about that other than They've now got listed up here, I don't know if you can see, obviously there's a barcode and then underneath here there's lots of different um, catalogue numbers depending on the, the territory and also the um, the list of like whether it's a cassette, CD and, uh, and such like. So that was the first one. Uh, now you've got to remember that CDs were coming in a big way. The Beatles um, were now issued on CD, so they're now going through and issuing Apple stuff on CD. So this is the first time you could get the stuff on uh, on CD. Um, but I still carry on buying vinyl, even throughout the early 2000s when no one else was buying vinyl. I carried on, and I'm really pleased I did. Anyway, that was the first one, 1991 issue of a James Taylor self-titled album, James Taylor. Okay, the next one up is another reissue of postcard Mary Hopkin um, there's nothing unusual about this other than it's uh, you know got the new date on here 1991 down the bottom obviously the uh, barcode which wasn't on the original and as well as the uh, the new release information there again it's an exact replica of the original issue um, the sleeve oh, actually do you know what I don't know what the inner sleeve is like so as a special treat I'm going to open it up and have a look 
purely because I don't know. Use the noise. So let's have a look. It's been in here so long, it's wedged in. There we are. So that's it out of the. Uh, oh, I've forgotten about this. This does actually have bonus tracks. There we go. So it opens up, gatefold sleeve. There we go. Beautiful. I'd, do you know what? I'd totally forgotten about that. Opened up. Um, let's have a look at the inner sleeves. Oh, they just look like they're regular white sleeves. Beautiful vinyl. Oh, it's silky. It's silky. There we are. That's the label. Slightly paler than the uh, than the original one, um, and also it looks very similar to European. Presumably, this, these were made for the, not only the UK but the European market, and they were all um, they were all sold and made at the same time. Um, I'm just trying to see where this one says. Um, yeah, there's no uh, no indication of a country. Oh, it does come with a, uh, a cut on the uh, sleeve, so you can see the label on that one. So while I've got it open, I might as well show you the uh, the bonus disc. So this is the bonus disc. I'm going to go back and check the James Taylor one, just in case that. So this has got um, turn, 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 and those were the days um, on the uh, A side. Again, pay, played at 45, and then those were the days. Um, looks like a Spanish version on the B side. How cool is that? Do you know what? I might even go down and give that a spin um, later on because it, these have never been played. These are as virgin as the day they came into the record shop. I brought them home and they've sat in my collection and these are totally unplayed. So I'm very excited about giving these a little spin just to hear how good the uh, reissue quality was. So I'm going to pop that back in, uh, in its sleeve. Let me have a look on this. Um, I don't think there's any bonus ones on the James Taylor. I'm just going to double check because I might as well double check them all. <coughs> because the Mary Hopkin one was a surprise. So let me have a look. So yeah, as I said, it's a gatefold sleeve. Um, different pictures are from memory. I, I can't remember what was on the inside of the gatefold but of the original. But there you go. No, uh, no bonus material on this. Oh, oh, do you know what? I'm going to open them all for you, just for you. So there we go. How great is that? So that's the James Taylor one. We've done Mary Hopkin. Who's next up? Of course, Jackie Lomax. Is this what you want? Now I do believe, I do believe um, that this is the. Uh, third out of the 1991 reissues and I do believe that this does have a bonus um, bonus disc it does it comes with two discs there we go this is a gatefold now as well wasn't on the original release and uh, let's have a look and see what's on the bonus disc oh, this just comes in a plain white sleeve nothing, uh, nothing special there Okay, so uh, yeah, on the A side, again played at 45, you've got New Day, Don't You Come Back, Going Back to Liverpool, um, previously unreleased tracks, apart from New Day obviously, and then Thumb in a Ride and How the Web Was Woven, and I believe they were the singles. Um, probably not on the original album, or if they are, they've got to be different versions. So uh, I'll be playing them after this uh, little video. Let's just pop this back inside its sleeve. Excuse me. There we go. Uh, that was Jackie Lomax. Next up, that's the way God planned it, Billy Preston. Once again, replica of the outer sleeve, obviously with the added barcode and stuff. Um, but this also has bonus tracks, previously unreleased of um, Through All Times. Um, a previously unreleased unversion of That's the Way God Planned It and As I Get Older is a, a, another track on the on the uh, bonus disc so, let me have a look this is uh, I'm so excited about I haven't looked at these in all these years 
So let's open it up to have a look at the, oh wow, George and Billy. Plus um, you can see the sleeves there of the singles. Some pictures of Billy there. That's fabulous. Brilliant. Again, just plain white inners by the looks of it. Yeah, just plain white inners. Brilliant. It's fabulous. I, I am literally once I finish this once I finish this video, I'm gonna take them downstairs where my turntable is and I'm gonna give them all a spin for their very first ever spin. So that was the first four. That was James Taylor, Mary Hopkin postcard, um, Billy Preston's That's the Way God Planned It, and Jackie Lomax, Is This What You Want? That's all we had in 91. 92 come along, four more. Beautiful. Let's dive. Let's see what we've got coming out. First up, Magic Christian Music by Badfinger. Great is that. Beautiful. So I'm going to open it just to see if there's anything new. Again, it's a replica of the uh, of the original sleeve. Let's have a look. Gatefold. Wow. How cool is that? There is a bonus disc, um, Storm in a Teacup, which was on the uh, Apple EP, the Walls EP. And a previously unreleased song called Arthur. So there we are. Cool. And um, yep, there we are. It's got the die cut sleeve for Badfinger. Awesome. Okay, next up, what else have we got? Um, wow. Wonderwall. Again, I'd totally forgotten that this was um, reissued. Um, it's got on the back here. Originally released in 1968. Um, again, reissued 1991. So let me, uh, let me have a look. Let's have a look at this one. Again, now issued in a fabulous gatefold sleeve. There's no bonus tracks on this, but you have got some stills and uh, a bit of blurb about the album and the film, see? Wonderwall music. Great, Some great pictures of George there as well. And uh, oh, and there we have a replica of the original inner as well. How great. List of all the musicians, let's have a look at the apple. And that is stunning. That is absolutely stunning. Go. I, I do hope you're enjoying these uh, little delves into my record collection and oh, I just can't believe this stuff has remained unlooked at by myself. It's just sitting in a box on a shelf and when I moved some stuff I saw it lurking behind. Okay next up we have Maybe Tomorrow by the Ivies, of course this was the precursor to Badfinger and again this comes with some uh, as well as the original album a bonus record too so without any further delay let's have a look inside this fabulous one so maybe tomorrow by the Ivies open it up and there we go some pictures of the uh, foreign sleeves, European sleeves. Yeah, some pictures of the band. Uh, tells you a little bit about the album. And the bonus tracks for those of you who want. Um, we've got No Escaping Your Love. Um, we've got Mrs. Jones, which was previously unreleased. And Her Dad is a Millionaire, um, which um, has been out. And Looking for My Baby, which is a, a previously unreleased um, song. Again, it's just a standard um, white inner. This, so this is the bonus. Um, this is the bonus disc. It's played at 45. I, I'm guessing these must be quite hard to find these days because they never seem. To, I never. I never seem to see them in any record shops. Presumably, you can get them online. Um, 
you know, if people are selling them, I'll have to check Discogs out to see what the um, what the score is with them. Um, but, uh, there we go. Um, next up, oh, another bad finger. No dice. Um, so it looks like we actually had five out because I hadn't, I'd for, totally forgotten about um, Wonderwall music um, being reissued. I should check to see if it's on the Zappel label. Um, I don't think it was. Okay, so um, this was a gatefold sleeve when it originally came out, and there's the original inner. Um, does have bonus tracks. Um, all unreleased. Get down. Friends are hard to find. Mean, mean Gemina. Loving you, and I'll be the one. Originally issued in. Oh, there we go. Nice in a sleeve. There we go. This tracks. Um, Sapcore 16. Let's have a look at the label, shall we? Love getting the Apple label, it's such a, a classy and iconic label. There we are, No Dice by Badfinger. Um, so that's the main album. I don't know if there's uh, anything different, like uh, if there's a, um, just a plain white inner sleeve for the bonus tracks. Let's have a look, or is there more? No, that just comes in a plain white paper sleeve. Okay, fabulous. Fabulous. And uh, I believe this is, let me just check. No, nope, we've still got a couple more to go from the 92 issues. Next up, Earth Song, Ocean Song by Mary Hopkin, originally released in 71. Um, again, it's got the barcode now, that's the only addition to it. It was a gatefold sleeve originally, so let's have a look and see if it's kept its uh, originality inside, or have they? Done something new. No, it's the same as it was before it was. No bonus tracks on this one. So that's the uh, gatefold. Let me check inside. Oh, we do have a um, new inner sleeve which didn't come. It's got some, uh, it's got a, um, like a press release from Derek Taylor on the printed on the back. Brilliant. Okay, let's stick that one back in the cover. This is, uh, this is like a voyage of discovery for me. Um, I, I, I just can't believe these have been sitting here. Um, I do play my original Apple, you know, the original issue ones, um, but uh, I haven't played these versions. So, Doris Troy, self-titled album, Doris Troy. And this does also have some unreleased tracks on the bonus. We've got um, all that I've got previously unreleased. We've got Get Back, Dearest Darling, also previously unreleased, um, What You Will Blues, unreleased, and then Vea Con Dios. So um, let's open it up and have a look inside and see what the gatefold looks like, because this was not a gatefold sleeve when it originally came out. And there we are, great picture of Doris. Great picture of Doris there. The blurb, track listings. Uh, let's have a look at the inner sleeves. I don't think there'll be anything special. No, they're just literally the paper sleeves. Let me check the other one. Yeah, they're just regular, pa um, regular paper sleeves. Poly lined. And then um, this is the bonus one. Again, played at 45. Brilliant. Slip that back in there, and I believe we should have one more from the 90, 92 issues, and that's John Tavern of the Whale, originally issued in 1970. So that's the back Apple logo, obviously, now the new added barcode. Uh, this was a gatefold sleeved album before, so um, presumably they've kept. Same inner picture. 
let's have a look. Yeah, that's exactly the same as the original issue. However, I'm guessing, I have not sure, but I'm guessing that there must be. Oh, yes, there was a. Um, it's a similar issue to the original inner sleeve as well. Wow, so they've redone that. Brilliant. Um, Andy Davis has done a bit of writing. Brilliant. I'm just so impressed. Would you? I'm easily pleased. Okay, next up. Um, right. This is the start of the 93 um, reissues, and this is obviously when I got the box because the box said on there not to be, you know, not to be delivered until the March, whatever date in March uh, 93. So presumably that box would have contained. 25 or 20 copies of the same record um, so I don't know what one it pertains to or it might have just been all of the um, issues from 93 you know maybe two copies of each or something like that but uh, anyway we have a modern jazz quartet under the jasmine tree I'll be honest with you jazz is not my thing so I can honestly say I do have the original apple I've never played it Jazz is not my thing, I'm afraid. Um, I collect it because it's on Apple. So, um, right, let's have a look inside here. Let's open this one up. I might give this one a go. I don't know. I don't know. So there we are. Um, oh, fabulous. How nice is that? No bonus material in this issue. Um, let me have a oh, that's nice. They're going back to a black inner sleeve, which I believe some Apple original Apple issues were, uh, certainly Beatles were anyway. There we go. It's nice, isn't it? Probably can't see it. There we are. But oh, I'm super pleased it's in a black inner. Um, this is like me finding out for the first time. <laughs> I don't know how many uh, of you guys out there watching this. Um, also bought the um, reissues when they came out at the time. It's something I'm really glad I did because I don't see them come up very often for sale. I'm guessing they're probably worth far more than I ever paid for them. Um, because to be to be fair, who would want to buy a modern jazz quartet reissue from 1970 in 1993? Um, probably diehard fans and collectors. Okay, next up, let's have a look. We've got Billy Preston. Brilliant. And this is um, Encouraging Words. Again, it's just the exact same as the original issue. And uh, it does have the bonus disc. Some great pictures there. Billy, fresh from uh, recording with the Beatles in uh, Ab for Abbey Road and, and Let It Be. So there we are. Originally issued in 1970, so literally the next year. And uh, let's have a look. Great black inner sleeves. Love it, love it, love it. So as I say, um, it does have bonus tracks of um, as long as I've got my baby, all that I've got I'm going to give to you, which was a, uh, a single. So that is like a 12-inch single. It's just one record. So that's that one. Okay, next up we do have, um, excuse me, so next up we have the Arada Krishna Temple, um, the Hare Krishna movement, with their uh, album, originally issued in 1973, so it's uh, the back cover, and then inside it's um, just some more writing, a couple of pictures, but the uh, beautiful thing about this one is it's got a great inner sleeve. Um, this is the 20th anniversary of the manor house that George bought, the Hare Krishna movement. So um, it's got a little 20th anniversary thing down there. But on the back, on the reverse, is some great pictures of George with the followers. Um, he's got his guitar, it looks like he's on some sort of keyboardy thing there. Um, so it must have been when he was just sort of 
playing music with them and uh, chanting. <laughs> but there we are. Um, yeah, that's a great one. Do certainly do like that one. Okay, next up. In fact, it is straight up. Next up, straight up. Again, a replica of the uh, album cover, but again, a uh, brilliant in a sleeve showing some um, European sleeves for the singles um, and a British sleeve. Great picture of the band, and this does have a bonus disc of. Um, let me look. Uh, original versions of Money Flying, Name of the Game, Suitcase and Perfection, and the US single mix of Baby Blue. And once again in Black Inners. Great. That's the back sleeve. Okay. Next up is um, John Taverner's second album for Apple, Celtic Requiem. Um, Always thought this was a, a, a bit of a creepy cover, um, sort of, you know, it's child grave and all that sort of thing. Uh, a, a church in the background, um, and then got some more writing about the album there. Some more photos, looks like some more outtakes from the same session. Um, no bonus material on this one. Originally issued in '71. However, the inner sleeve does have some great. Has a great photo there of the uh, photo session for the album and then um, Andy Davis from Record Collector Magazine has done a bit of blurb on the back. So that was John Tavener's second Apple album. Okay. Now we move on to um, the 1996 um, issues. Um, it's this time Badfinger. Uh, it's like their greatest hits. Um, this is a double album. Um, it does include some of the stuff that's already come out. But, uh, again, there it is there. So uh, I believe this was probably, um, well, seeing as it's a, a, not a, a reissue, so this was um, issued in 95. Uh, issued in 95 as a compilation. So let's have a look inside. Ooh. Fabulous. So we are. Pictures of the albums, pictures of the band, a bit of writing. As I say, it is a double album, so uh, don't suspect there'll be anything uh, different about the inners because it's, it's just a compilation. There so we can see it's a very, very pale, uh, it is a like a, a European, what I would call uh, European, it's not. It's very heavy, it's 100, obviously 180 gram um, album, but uh, the apple itself is uh, the design is very light in colour and it is very reminiscent of um, our European friends' um, issues for their records. Probably looks very familiar to them. Okay, so next up, we're getting down near the bottom of the pile now. In fact, this is the second but last one. Um, so another bad finger one, Ass, um, their last, their last album on Apple. Not in a gatefold sleeve. This is out of all of them, the one that has not come in a gatefold sleeve. It does have a bonus track of "Do You Mind" on it, but uh, that's just been added to the normal vinyl release. But we will have a look inside. Um, there we are. the cover. Inside we do have a nice printed, I don't know if this is a replica of the original, again no it's written by Andy Davis in 1996 so obviously not a replica of the original at all. Um, there we are, a bit of blurb, um, bonus track, let's have a look, oh yes, there we go. I'm definitely going to give these a spin, I'm sure I've already said that earlier, but i um, super excited. And um, the last one, um, sorry, I've got two more to show you, there was another one lurking in the bottom. Uh, three more, wow, three more. <laughs> okay, electronic sounds on, um, on Zapple, wow. 
I totally forgot that this had been reissued in 96. That's brilliant. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a look inside. Let's see what it looks like. So it's a, a fabulous inner sleeve. There we are. Um, pretty sure the original was on paper. This is on nice heavy duty cardboard. And then, do you know what? I'm going to have to scan this in because I've never seen that before and I love it. Zapple, definitely going to scan that in and use that on, the, on my phone screensaver or something like that. Yeah, and it's on the, the Zapple label. There we go. Great. Um, I, unfortunately, I can definitely say this is one I won't be playing. I've heard it before, and um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really do it for me. I'm afraid, so I won't be listening to this one again. However, um, we've got a couple more to go. Modern Jazz Quartet um, Space. No bonus material here. Originally uh, issued in '69. Reissued in '96. So, let's have a look inside here. Yeah, no, uh, no gatefold sleeve. However, a few jazz fans there. I'm not one, unfortunately, but there we are. It's a nice inner sleeve. Lots of writing, telling you about the art design, the cover, and the record. Let's pop that down there. Okay, and the last last one out of the box is I think probably one of the hardest ones to find. I do have an original issue from 72, and I also have this on CD. I know that um, it's in my CD rack behind where the camera is. Um, but I also now have, well, I had it in 96 when it first came out. Originally issued, originally issued in 72. So let's have a look. It's Ravi Shankar. Um, and Ali Akbar Khan in concert 1972 as well as some other musicians ok let's open it up there we are. I believe that's the same as the original issue 72 so have a look see if there's anything new on the inner sleeves. No, they are just standard white inner sleeves with an Apple label. Okay, uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I may well have done, um, because the recording did stop halfway through, as you may have noticed. So I can't remember if I did uh, say. In, also inside this box were some more records that I'd totally forgotten about. Um, not part of the Apple reissues, but reissues all the same. And I'm actually going to put them in my uh, in my racks here once I've finished recording. Um, they are special reissues, um, EMI 100 uh, and anniversary of John Lennon's Rock and Roll. There we are. Um, and it's it's a centenary issue. Let's, uh, let's have a look inside. I don't think there's, I don't think this is gatefold sleeve, but it is heavy vinyl. It's uh, 180 um, gram vinyl. Um, it's no special inner sleeve, as you can see, but it is beautiful. And I'm certainly going to be giving this a spin later on. There we go. Great. So um, yeah, as I say, uh, I did find these inside the Apple um, box. It's John Lennon's centenary, EMI centenary of Imagine. This has now been superseded with um, uh, you know, reissues and remixes and stuff like that. So let's have a look and see what it says inside. This, this looks like it could be. No, it's not a gatefold sleeve, but there is, oh, it comes complete with, of course, the poster that we, that we all know and love from the original issue. There we are. Yeah, I'm not going to get it all out because it's very large. 
and cumbersome. What else do we have in here? We also have um, replica in a sleeve on heavy duty card, but that's separate. And you also get your record in a nice record cover as well to save damage in the inner sleeve. And of course, we get the obligatory John Lennon with his cow, uh, pig, sorry, pig. Next up as part of the centenary, EMI centenary issue, is Band on the Run. It's great. They say up here, I don't know if you can read it, it says a Classic LP's original packaging, 180 gram pressing, high, heavy quality sleeves, analog cutting from analog tapes. Excuse me a second, everything's falling down. Okay, so fan on the run. Let's have a look. Poster, which uh, came with the original one, I believe. Well, it certainly did, I know that for a fact. Let's have a look. What else do it, does it come with? It comes with, uh, as it said, the uh, original replica inner sleeve, as well as a replica of the original album. Okay, so that's almost it. The only one that's left now to show you is from the Millennium Vinyl Collection of John Lennon's Walls and Bridges. It has all the uh, foldy out bits for the cover. I'm not going to open this one up because uh, it's exactly the same um, as the other ones we've seen. Nothing, no bonus things on there. Um, it's very heavy, very weighty. Um, so there we go. That is it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed another little delve into my personal record collection.